Hello there! I'm glad you could make it. I'm Oswald B. Thompson, the CEO of Coaster Coast. Oh, Oswald, I didn't realize we had a guest. I'm terribly sorry, it didn't come up on my schedule. Not to worry, Eugene. This is the person I was telling you about. You're looking at the successor of Coaster Coast. Well, providing everything goes smoothly, of course. I can't just hand them the keys to the kingdom now, can I? Eh? <laughs> Goodness, I do apologize. I've just checked my roster and there you are, right between King Coaster and Queen Splash. Not quite sure how I managed to royally mess that up, but never mind. You're accounted for now. Marvelous. Well, with that sorted, I think it's about time Eugene, our brilliant ride engineer, and I showed you the ropes. Consider this your official induction. Before we get started, we have a checklist of objectives from HR that we need to go through. I know, I know. But it's been company policy ever since one of our interns didn't know how to move around. We left them to it, only to find them in the same spot three days later. Oh, that won't be you, though. Let's try moving the camera around the park now. Now, I've got something that I think you'll enjoy. It's time to build your first ride. I'll hand you over to Eugene. He won Ride Engineer of the Year in 2016, so you're in good hands. I took the liberty of getting a ride ready for you to build. All you need to do is find a place to put it. Ended. Our guests will need a way to access the ride, so let's add an entrance gate. And with every entrance we need, that's right, an exit gate. You will need to connect a queue path to the ride entrance. Without one, guests will not be able to access the ride. We obviously won't need queues for guests leaving the ride. Could you imagine? <laughs> so you'll need to make sure you're connecting a standard park path to the exit gate. And that's it! That's all the steps for building a ride. 
If you do need a handy little way to remember those steps, I used to remember it as BEEP. Building, entrance, exit, path. <laughs> oh, and don't forget to open the ride. Actually, oh, that would make it BEEPO, wouldn't it? Oh, doesn't have the same ring to it. It's also worth noting that our guests will have to pay for tickets to enjoy the rides in our parks. We control how much we charge, though. So let's encourage guests to ride our latest attraction by setting the ticket price to bargain for now. We can always increase the price later. As I like to say, when you achieve popularity, charge premium for prosperity. But one step at a time, eh? For now, a very well done and a shiny medal earned. That's your first ride built, and I'm sure it'll be the first of many. The addition of a new ride will have given a slight boost to our park rating. Multiple different factors contribute to this rating, so you'll want to pay attention to the park rating overview. The better the rating, the more guests will visit. Ah, while driving the guest count up is good, we need to make sure the guests also remain happy while they're visiting. As you can see, we've just received a report that not all of the guests are enjoying themselves. It seems some are rather thirsty. To avoid this in the future, it's handy to keep checking on the Guest Needs tab. If things start dropping too low, you should step in and solve the issue before guests decide to leave. Let's start by quenching any thirst amongst our guests with a new drink shop. Now, the guests will need somewhere to relieve themselves after all that intake. Why not build a toilet nearby? We wouldn't want our guests walking around with crossed legs now, would we? That isn't good for anyone's posture. Speaking of walking, guests will get tired pretty quickly and their energy will drop if they don't have a place to sit. We should make sure there are plenty of benches available. Think of them as Planconian recharging stations. They're even wireless. work. The guests will be a lot happier now. However, it does come at a price. More food and drink in the park also means more waste. Exactly. So it's important we have enough bins for people to properly dispose of their waste.
Fantastic! That'll keep the park looking cleaner. We shouldn't stop there, though. Let's make the park look even better by adding some scenery around the ride you built. That way, guests can enjoy the view while they queue. <laughs> I think that's everything checked off the scenery list. Well done! Wow! The park is looking great! I can see why Oswald picked you. You're a natural. Now, if we're to keep adding more rides or facilities, they need to be connected to the power grid. Select an existing generator to view its info panel and see how much electricity it's producing. The generator is powering a network that covers the area filled with rides and facilities. Let's expand that network to cover an open area of the park. To do that, place and connect the additional power facility to the grid. Nicely done! It's all running very smoothly indeed. But to keep the generators maintained and working, you must hire mechanics. Without them, the generators will start gaining a condition penalty, which will decrease the power output. Oh, it seems we don't actually have any mechanics hired. Well, that won't do. Let's hire a few straight away. It may seem excessive, but they're essential when it comes to the maintenance of rides and facilities. Uh-oh! Uh I must have jinxed it! We've had a ride break down! Good job we have those mechanics to go and nurse it back to health. An available mechanic will automatically be assigned to fix a broken ride. However, if one is not available, you will have to select the Call Mechanic button to reassign somebody to the job. Be careful, though, as reassigning a staff member might mean you no longer have coverage elsewhere. Hiring staff is just the beginning, though. You also need to pay attention to staff morale. If it gets too low, staff will start to quit their jobs. Breaks are absolutely essential when it comes to keeping staff morale up. And just like guests, our staff need a place to re-energize. To make all of their tired little dreams come true, you should place a staff building. Admittedly, they're not the most glamorous of buildings. So I'd advise you to place your staff building away from the guest areas, wherever possible. 
After all, we don't want to bring down that scenery rating that you worked so hard to build up. Great! Now the park staff have somewhere to go on their breaks and enjoy some peace and quiet. We just need to ensure our inquisitive guests don't go waltzing on in there for the free coffee, claiming to be lost. The best way to avoid this is by connecting an exclusive staff-only path to the building. Guests won't dare step foot on those tiles. We'll need to build a mechanic workshop. Here, mechanics will generate research points that are used to unlock new items for your park. Let's leave the mechanic to it for now. We'll revisit this soon. Oh, what an exquisite sight. I... I think I need a moment. Oh, get some every time. Ah, just in time. Our mechanic has earned enough research points to unlock something exciting. Let's take a look at the research tree and aim to unlock the coaster pack. It'll bring a tear to Eugene's eye. Oh my! Oswald, is that... Is that the one I was designing? The very same, lad. I was just about to make a start on it. But I tell you what, why don't you walk our new friend through it? It would be my pleasure. Now, this is just a little something I made earlier. <laughs> first things first, you'll need to select the blueprint. and place the coaster down wherever there is enough space. Perfect! One important note here is that, unlike flat rides, coasters need to pass a safety test before they can be opened. Now's as good a time as any. Would you like a countdown? Five, 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 five. Four. Four, four, four. Oh, you just want to get on with it. Oh, okay, not a problem. While we wait for the test to finish, let's take the opportunity to add some scenery around the coaster.
and remember to open the ride like you did earlier on. Oh, that is a beauty! Terrific work, you two. This is a coaster that truly deserves a place in the spotlight. So, how about we put together an advertisement to mark the occasion, hmm? Head to the advertising tab in the park management menu and let's show the world what the park has to offer. There aren't different audiences to cater for, however, so it's worth considering which advertisement will bring the most guests to your park. wait for our campaign to start bringing in more guests, why don't you try out the ride camera and experience all the exhilaration the coaster will have to offer firsthand? Enough for the time being? <laughs> Thank you again for all your hard work. Coaster Coast is going to be in the best of hands, I can tell. Oswald, you're not... You're not... <laughs> I'm not going anywhere just yet, Eugene. Don't panic. We're just getting started. Dipping our toes in the... Uh... Actually, hold that thought. I've got just the job lined up for you. I'll send you the details. See you soon. to see you again. Come along, you're right on time. Now, this park is going to be slightly different from the previous park. How? I hear you cry out in anticipation. Well, my eager beaver, we're going to expand this park into, drum roll please, a water park. Of course, we wouldn't expect you to start building pools and flumes all on your own. So, I'd like to hand you over to Brad Newton, our very own water ride engineer. Hey, mate. How's it going? I'm Brad, and when it comes to water rides, I'm your guy. I used to think everyone was admiring my physique. They'd shout, Waterman! But turns out they were just calling me Waterman. 
I still take it as a compliment, though. In any case, let's get started. I've set out an area for you to work in. You can't just go planting a pool down anywhere you please. I learned that lesson on Eugene's eighth birthday. He really did love his first laptop, but it ended up giving a new meaning to surfing the web. A 50 megahertz processor, four meg of RAM, and one floppy disk drive. Uh, trust my brother to mistake a motherboard for a surfboard. <coughs> anyway, let's focus on our new area. The first thing a water park needs is, well, water. <laughs> I've prepared a blueprint for you to get started. Of course, you don't have to use that one. I only stayed up all night to make it for you. It's no big deal or anything. Just select the one you want and place it wherever you like. As long as the guests can reach it, of course. Nice! That's a pretty enticing pool. So, we want to make sure people can actually swim in it. To do that, we'll need to give them a place to get changed into their swimwear. Have you ever walked around in wet denim? I do not recommend it. Build some changing rooms and a body dryer in a place that's easy to access. Oh, and make sure it's connected to a path, for obvious reasons. Doing a brilliant job so far. Brad seems to have rushed off to find his swimming trunks, so I'll take you through the final steps. Now that the pool is complete, guests will be rushing to purchase their pool passes. At the moment, they're only available at the entrance, so we should place down a guest services building nearby. With this guest services up and running, guests will have more places to buy a pass that will give them access to all the water attractions in the park. No pass, no pool. Ooh, found them. I can't wait to take a dip. This is all looking amazing. I'm starting to get what Oswald sees in you. You've got great potential here with us. That being said, there's still much for us to do. I couldn't agree more. As the pool is now up and running, we must keep it clean. After all, no one wants to dive into dirty water. To do this, all you need to do is add a water filter to the pool. If the pump isn't working, make sure it has power. I found most technical problems can be solved by plugging it in. <laughs> it also needs to be able to reach the water of the pool to work. Don't worry though, it doesn't have to cover the whole pool. Just a part will do.
work. Our job isn't done yet, though. Sometimes guests can tie themselves out in the water and need a place to kick back and relax. We should add some sun lounges so they have a place to chill out. Oh, and some ladders and a diving board, too. Extra little touches like these will improve the prestige of the pool. The better the prestige, the more guests will want to visit. It's a win-win. Don't forget to make sure the pool is deep enough to dive in first before placing a diving board. I found that out the hard way, quite literally. I think it's about time we check on our pool and make sure guests are enjoying it and feel safe. Select the pool and take a look at the pool safety tab. Oh my goodness, Brad! Brad! There's a guest panicking! What do we do? Whoa! That's weird. Hey, mate! Have you tried swimming? Mm, I don't think that's it. Okay, yeah. They need some help. Oh, think of the paperwork! Okay, everyone, stay calm! D don't panic! Breathe, Eugene. We've got this. It's all in hand. Place down a lifeguard point at the side of the pool. Without one, lifeguards won't be able to rescue distressed guests. have to do now is wait for the lifeguard to do their job. There we go. See, Eugene? The guest is fine. Are, uh, are you fine, though? Yeah, of course. I'm totally fine. Um, you're in your happy place. Cell A1, cell A2, cell A3. Data validation. <sighs> While Eugene comes back down to Earth, I want to say you did a great job under pressure. A lifeguard will rescue anyone they see struggling, as long as they're on duty at their point. It's all part of maintaining our pool safety. Remember, though, they're only Planconian. They can only cover so much area at once. Larger pools will need more lifeguards and lifeguard points to keep everyone safe. So, you smashed the first pool out of the park. Uh, not literally, of course. <laughs> that would be difficult, not to mention an HR nightmare. But one pool does not a water park make.
Nicely done. Just make sure to hire extra lifeguards to keep the pool safety in the green. I don't think I have another Eugene meltdown in me today. <laughs> I have no idea what you're on about. A true water park needs stuff like wave pools, flumes and lazy rivers. With that being said, let's start by building a flume. You'll need to know how to build a flume from scratch. So, I'll give you a crash course. First, select the flume that you want from the many beautiful rainbow options we have available. Sweet choice! Now, we need to start with the platform. Simply place it down where you think is best. You can also attach multiple flumes to a platform, if you're feeling adventurous. The next step is to start building the flume itself. Start by placing the flume entrance. This is where the slide will start, in case it wasn't obvious. Okay, now here comes the fun part. We have the platform, we have the entrance. Now we need the slide. Place it down however you like. Just keep the angle of the slide in mind. You need the guests to get enough speed to keep going. <laughs> that reminds me, want to see a cool trick? Eugene can determine the angle of anything just by looking at it. Oh, Brad, I really don't think they want to... Nonsense! It's your party trick. At least it would be if you'd join me at any. Come on, what angle is uh, this? 35.7 degrees. Ha <laughs> ha! Bingo! How cool is that? Blows my mind every time. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes, building the slide. Alongside the angle, you should also keep an eye on the twists and turns. Indeed. If the lateral g-force is too high, it will scare the guests. Not to mention raise the flume's fear and nausea rating. This is looking great! You just need to add a flume exit onto the end of the slide now. Make sure it's close to the water. The guests will need the water to break their landing. That might sound like common sense, but Brad has a scar on his arm that would say otherwise. Shh! Keep your voice down! I've been telling people it's from when I tried to surf wet cement and almost managed it.
Anyway, now it's time to test this baby out. We can only open the ride if the test dummy safely reaches the end. Don't worry if it doesn't work on the first try. Eugene got us a great deal on them, so we have plenty spare. Ah, uh, Eugene Newton is no stranger to the artistry of the coupon code. The big moment is finally here. It's now time to open your very first flume ride. I'm getting oddly emotional. Ah, uh, I remember your first ride opening, Brad. Albeit that was one of a smaller scale, consisted of paper cups, and ended in the gravy boat at the dinner table. But a fond memory nevertheless. I wanted to check in and see how the onboarding was going with our new friend here. But I can see there was nothing to worry about. The park is looking great. I knew you were the right pick for the job. It seems you're running out of space, though. That simply won't do. I'll transfer over some money for you to purchase the new area of land. And with that, your initial onboarding is complete. It's time for you to take what you've learned here and apply it to new parks. If you want to hang around here a bit longer though, Eugene has prepared a list of objectives for you to make your way through. Don't worry, if you forget anything that was said here, you can always check the help menu. You did such a good job here. You should be proud. I'm looking forward to riding this wave of success with you in future parks. Agreed. A spectacular start. You've got the Newton Brothers' seal of approval. A mighty feat indeed. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. I need to go and make the preparations for our next endeavor.